All right. Dean's playing the Munsters. <laughs> We're at the warehouse. Oh, look at it. Not very good at that, Dean. You know, I used to be really good at it. Yeah. But they've got extra tilt on these tables. Now. Oh, is that is that it's the, the problem? Quick. Okay. Well, so, we were at the fish room, and Dean's like, can we go to the warehouse? I need stuff. Yeah, so I got my stuff. Um, you, you guys will see about that later. It's all in that box over there. Yeah. Um, but, you know, let's take these guys through the warehouse for a change. You know, you know they would love to see that. Sure. And, and can we turn this off? It's really noisy. Sure. There's a switch somewhere. It's hidden. There we go. Oh, you got it. Good night, guys. Dean's so, been asking me to to do a video I here. I try not. I don't want to. You know, Corey has not wanted to do this. It's, and we're not doing this, you know, to, to show off. But maybe I'm showing it off. You know, because I first met Corey, what, eight, maybe more years ago? When we were yeah. both hobbyists. I was into shrimp. You were into monster fish. That yeah. did not work together, does it? Not so right? much, yeah. And so, you know, but we, we were talk, and then you got the store, and we started selling some of my fish there, uh, and then the store kind of exploded, YouTube exploded, and now we've got this. How many square feet is this place? Uh, it's between nine and 10,000. I was gonna say about 10,000 square yeah. feet. You know, so, so let's walk through it and show them what's happening out here. So this must be like the break room for the employees. Yeah, I mean, we were gonna put the lunch table and all that in there, and then we got more employees inside. That wasn't economical or yeah. not, didn't, wasn't reasonable. So now it's out there. I mean, there's a fridge and we still have more to put in here. And yeah, this, this, you can, know. this area can kind of still evolve. Yeah, I mean, we got the pinball machine. Like we're right. bringing in some fun stuff. Like it's, yeah. it's a work in progress. Yeah. So you walk into the warehouse and you're like, first like, holy crap. Yeah, it's big. This is big. Um, and you know, you guys are gonna hear a little bit of noise. A lot of dehumidifiers going. There's dehumidifiers going, there's fans running. Um, you wanna head down the plant section first? You lead on a tour. This okay, is this is your on. video, so. So, now, Joel has been a key part of this project. For sure. Um, he's put this all together, painted the stands. The sumps are here on the end. Yep. I believe those are CO2 tanks, right? Correct, yep. So, um, got auto dosing going on with fertilizer. Yep. And this whole row is all for plants. Yep. Now, just to FYI, there's not an intention down the road to ship fish right now. No. So, don't be asking This that. is only for plants. This is just plants. Yeah. Uh, now, and also, I don't know what all these were, but I'm gonna do the tour backwards now because okay. I watch these college tours. Yeah. And you know, I can walk backwards and you can walk forwards. Is that what they do? Yeah. Oh, okay. And, you know, we've got some sort of uh, java fern there. So this tank is actually something that gets too much algae or we have other plants from new farms we're testing. Oh, look, it says what it is. Yeah. So everything's labeled. If you were like, normally a tank gets a label and then that's how everyone knows what to pull and where to pull it. So when you guys place an order, they go and pull from the tank. Every tank has a plant that lives in it. But in this tank, it's either they've got a little bit of algae on it or we're testing a new plant from a new farm. And I want to see how it does in our system. And then we got a count. They must have done a count recently. Yeah, 52 java fern extra because we, we've been ordering lots of plants because we've been getting lots of orders. These are sweet. Yeah, the bees are expensive. It's got a flower. Yep. I didn't know you had these. I would have been taking those. And all these tanks are, we had them custom made. So they're all one foot tall, 30 inches front to back and two feet wide, two feet wide. basically to maximize the footprint for plants. And so even in here, you can see we could sell a lot more abuse of lander because we have a lot more space, right. but we don't mix plants in, per tank in. unless okay. it's that one rehabilitation, rehabilitation tank to minimize any, uh, Picks. So this back here is the overflow. Yep. And you can see, well, over here, you can see that it's it's throwing water in. Yeah, we put huge. I had to buy the biggest pumps I've ever seen for this system to because the biggest ones I'd ever bought before weren't big enough. Holy crap. So this thing here moves uh, 8,000 gallons per hour. And, and that's through a two inch, two and a half inch pipe. Two inch pipe. And that only does the top row. So we have to run one of these giant pumps on each section. 
Wow. They use 750 watts each, so it's like 1500 watts of energy per system. So, so is there an extra one if one ever goes bad? Not yet. There will they're be very that. expensive. Well, they're not very, they're not cheap. I'll say that. Like, we, we have all these other pumps that can kind of move water, but not like we needed to. Oh, these are awesome too. Look at that. Yeah. Oh, no, that's a new leaf. I thought it might be yeah. a flower. No, no flowers, just new leaves. But the newer leaves are going to be a little bit lighter in color. Yeah. Um, but, and, and these are, these are shippable. Oh yeah, we ship okay, everything so here. Everything, the, everything in the warehouse we're shipping. Uh, we all, we run the Fluval 3.0 lights on everything. You know, so we didn't skimp yep. on lighting. We inject CO2. Uh, right now, we're working on building about 40 billion plant racks. So the racks that are holding oh, yeah, the plants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're yes. building our own new oh, system. Nice. Oh, I see. Here, here you go. This is, good shot. is this a good? Well, if we go up front, I think I can show you the actual. Oh, I think we put them into use. Let me see. We we had prototypes and everything. Yeah, right here. We want it so that you we can take them out. Yes. And service them and put new plants. So you could just move this whole tray uh, of plants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And we're going to build a facility up front here when all the plant boxes land because we get 30, awesome. 40 boxes of plants at a time and you've got five or six employees putting plants away. We need to make it modular so there's not five or six people trying to go up and down the row all the time. So they can just bring it and, and do two fit in each one? Four are going to fit. So okay. what we want to do is if we sell out all the plants in the front, take those racks out, put them in a pile, move the next ones forward. So we're always right. rotating inventory as well. Yep. That makes so, sense. That's why we got to build like 40 billion racks, and they're, each one is custom built by us. You guys, look at these plants. Yeah, this is Pogo Stem and Salatus Octopus. Insanely good looking. And then you've got more back stock down low. And so what happens is the newest plants go in the bottom, and as we and sell out of the out. top ones, we move them up. Kind of the same thing you'll see over here with the Amania gracilis. Look at these guys. This is insane. They're so nice looking. This is one of the newer plants we brought on. Yeah, look at that shot. Like, Whoa. if you're looking for pinks and reds, and people always ask, why aren't you selling more pinks and red plants? Because we want it to look exactly like this. We want it to look really good and not be like, well, it's kind of a plant that's alive. Like, we're really spending a lot of time, you know, and there, we have tanks to expand. Like, right. this could be another right. red plant. Currently, nothing ever goes in here because we have expansion space currently. I like, I mean, I've seen several empty tanks. I like that idea that yeah. you can always move something. Yep, so we've got you know Java Moss down low here. We've got this Java Moss. So once this Java Moss sells out, we'll move those, up. those move up. The next ones will come in and go down there. So that way they get time just to, you know, acclimate to our water and grow a little bit. And not everything gets multiple, multiple tanks, but most things do because we're moving more and more plants every day. Coral moss here. This is a relatively yep. new moss, right? Yeah, new to the trade, and we can't get unlimited quantities, but yeah, it, it we get it immersed, and so it browns a little bit, but it grows for people, and it's just really rare, and we don't, you yep. know, we've got some Physidens moss down there. Yep. You know, and you can see when we're, like, we've been sold out of Crips Peralis for many months now. Like, we need to find a new source, but it's a great plant. I love it, but if I can't buy it, what can I do? Yeah, a lot of dwarf baby tears. All the baby tears in the world, right? Yep. Oh, now, now this is one um, just a, about... That's right. About a month ago, yeah, I had stopped in briefly, and I was giving um, Katie a bad time. Yep. That that you're selling pieces of rotten wood. Yep. You know, and she said, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I took one, and it's now a tiger lotus plant in my tank. Yeah. So we does, learned it that it does work. We learned that we could lower the price a little bit, and. The problem we were having is in a pot with the leaves, the leaf might snap off in It'll transit. Off. Right. Same thing can happen here, but if we send you just a little sprout, right. that usually doesn't break off and you save the money and then you go, wow, we got this plant and then it grew really fast instead of opening up and going, well, now yeah. I'm sad it's got a broken leaf. I mean, I think mine was not even sprouted. Yeah. Uh, and, and I'm like, this is never gonna grow. Mm -hmm. And sure enough, you know, literally, in the first week it sprouted yeah and the second week it had leaves about yep. two inches tall that's why we have to keep moving if we don't move they'll all get big and then they'll shade yes. each other so yes. we move i think it's one to two hundred of them every week and uh 
we keep that going intentionally. Is there a purpose to the algae eaters in here? I got to see an L-string loach and a... Mostly because what happens is if we don't get, let's say the farms are out for a week or two. Okay. There's still water, fertilizer, and light on this tank. We can grow a little bit of algae. So we, in general, keep, you know, like there's a little reticulated yes. hill stream loach. Uh, we've got nerite snails. We keep all that in every tank just to make sure we don't build up too much algae. Algae is a good thing, but we don't want tons of it. Right. So like for instance, great example, this Cryptosporalis tank, there's still nerite snails. You can see there's yes. poop in there yes. because they're cleaning for us even though there's nothing going on. Right. Yeah. And even though this system is probably five or six months old now, we're still settling it in because all the tanks aren't full. We have to keep as we add more plant lines, we have to up dosages, we have well, to do things. And I think that after you first set it up, you realize you need bigger pumps, so you have to redo all the Every time we make a change, it yeah. requires we calibrate everything, essentially. Right. So why is there sand in this tank? Because we find that if we put gravel in, they'll grow some roots, and then when we ship it to you, you know what's top and bottom. Top and bottom. Okay. If we don't put gravel, they never grow roots, they just grow a sprout, and then people will email us and go, how do I plant it? Right. So we, we do sell them Try fast make. enough that sometimes they never grow roots. But as you can see, a, yeah, a lot of the white parts, the those are all roots. Are roots. And so if we were selling, you know, someone just basically reaches in and they go, hey, here's a good one. We'll send them this one. Right. Right. And they just keep pulling. And like this one's got nothing going on. Yeah, that's like what I took home. But then you, you would go, oh, I'll sell them this one. Right. Or I'll sell them this one. And so we keep them rotating so that we always know, like that one's not ready to go yet. yet. right. So we keep enough in here to go, oh, well, we can always find some that are ready to sell. Got it, got it. And it doesn't take long for them to sprout and grow. So it's a dangerous thing of like, well, why not just have a billion of them? Like, well, then we have a billion full-size plants and that's a problem. Now, this happens to be one of my favorite. Yeah. Uh, if you've seen videos of my fish room, um, I've got several of these. Yeah, the job for on wood. Because I just put them in a bear tank like that. Mm -hmm. um, that's I took some Easy Green home today. That's what that's for. Keeps it keeps it green, um, and they last and last and last. I, I like I'm just going to point out this Anubius Barter is amazing. Someone should be buying this. It's gargantuous. Yeah. Dude, those are nice. Look at this. I don't always see all the shipments coming in because I'm doing other stuff, but yeah, even I know that's nice. Look at the size of that. That's a monster. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're looking wow, good. Wow, they look really good, yeah. So, Fizzidin's Moss, only got one left. Anubius Nana, pretty always, standard. That's a very popular. Product. You know, Crips. And are you still um, um, converting the Crips to some degree? Some, yeah, because we're bringing in more than we can sell in a week and we're converting them in a bit. But full conversion, the problem is that plant fully converted is smaller. Yes. So let me, if I pull one of these out. Yes. All these smaller leaves down here the are the ones. new growth. Okay. If all of these big ones die back, people go, you sent me such a tiny plant, why would you rip me off? And it's like, no, no, no. That's why you buy this plant because it's a Is tiny it? crypt that everyone loves. Yeah. And so we found shipping hundreds and hundreds of them a week that if you let them be big, people go, oh, this big right. plant, much better. But right. we do want new growth so that as this dies back, people are experiencing, it's, oh, we're getting new leaves. This is actually right. doing well, yeah. as opposed to growing nothing. Right. And what we don't want to be is there's a lot of sellers on there, and we won't name names, but they literally get a box full of plants then put it into your box and ship it. Like right. you can clearly see here, we have a giant facility to right. avoid that. That right. is not what we do. Yep. But we wanna make sure we're putting new growth, they're happy and healthy, because not every plant will always come in happy and healthy. Maybe got damaged when someone's collecting it or something like that. We wanna right. weed as much of that out as we can. One, it saves us money, because we're gonna reship you a plant if it's not good. And two, you have a better experience. Right. So, yeah. These guys are awesome down here. Yeah, the crypt, or not crypt, the but red flame red swords. swords, yep. Got some Starragunia pens down yeah. there, nice carpeting plant. Oh, this is always one in the favorite of mine. I can never grow it, but it's still yep. a favorite. Yep, Ozzelot sword. More Pogostoma Slots octopus. This must be very popular, huh? One of our most selling plants, and it can come and go whether it's going to be in stock or not. Okay. So that's And you actually have banana plants. We do, yep. Same thing, you notice like, oh, you've got substrate. Yep, we want to gr yes. start growing some roots if we can. We look through here and... You know, maybe you see some, you're like, well, that one doesn't look good. It's like, well, give it a week. It'll look good then. So we just yeah. keep choosing best of what we have available. And what I've seen in the past is a lot of times you might get these in a lot of the um, 
leaves might melt off. Yeah. But they send out new leaves really, really quick. Mm -hmm. And then the roots will come down from the bottom and they'll root themselves. Sometimes they'll almost pull themselves into the, oh, yeah. into the gravel. This is another yeah. prototype of a rack we were thinking. We chose not to go with this rack style, but you know, we've been, we could just build a lot of racks. We want to make sure we're building the right rack. So it's then like, right. okay, let's use it for like three weeks, a month. Oh, we love this one. Let's do this one. And then we go, can we make it any better? All right, now make 500 of them. Right. So, cause we have a uh, hundred of these tanks. We ordered basically a hundred tanks. And if each one needs four of them, that's at least 400. 400. And we need some to be rotating. Right. So we probably need about 500 of these racks we gotta make. I would think, and so you gotta make sure that when you make them, you make the one you want. Right, cause all these racks, like each rack costs, like if I, I remember when we weren't making them, when we would order them up from an acrylic manufacturer, each one cost me a hundred dollars. You start doing the math, wait, 500 times a hundred, that's way that's too much bunch. money. Yeah. So we can make them for probably about $30 with our own labor. That's still a ridiculous amount of money when you do that math. You're like, wait a second, isn't that 15 grand? Like, right. yep, that's why that's we make them as we can. That's why you want to make them right the first time. Dwarf aquarium lilies here, yep. same process, getting them to sprout. Yep. And we've got allergy eaters and stuff like that going on. We just have that in every tank. So, yep, yep pretty standard. Nice. Some really nice crypts down here. Yeah, so this is a good example. We've got Cryptocorn Wendetta. You asked if we melted them down. Those, those so those almost... have not been melted yet, but like a week later, we've melted them. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So what? And this is the problem. The this is the problem we run into is we got a little... grab one of those down there. These two plants look like two completely different plants to people. Now this has plant. one new leaf that is un grown underwater. This one is all grown underwater. You want this plant, right? Except the general public goes, "How dare you rip me off? This is a bigger plant." It's a bigger plant, but all of these leaves will melt off except for this yeah. one. Yeah. So that's where we try to me we try to make it towards this. But if everything moves too fast, you will get something like this. But we always want to make sure you have some that's new growth to go. Yes, this plant is pushing forward, and we're confident it will push forward in someone else's aquarium. Yeah. Yeah. That's what we're trying to do here. And so, depending on how fast or slow things sell and move, is how much converted they'll be. Right. So. And you know, we move a lot of, we move a lot of Scarlet Temple, and you can see here. So if you look at all the Scarlet Temple we have right now, and tomorrow we'll get probably a few hundred more, because tomorrow, I should explain that tomorrow's the giant plant day. So oh, this is great. us not being stocked, right? Yeah. So you can see that even though we have Scarlet Temple coming in tomorrow, we have this tank and this tank, and we'll have more tanks full of it. Yep. But this is the reason we put them into water, as you can see here, out of all of these. You can see there's, well, there's some that aren't winners. Like that thing right. we would never ship out. Yeah. Right? So that won't even go up into your front tank. No, it? that yeah. will end up getting thrown away and somehow it got damaged or yeah. whatever. Yeah. And so it doesn't look as good, as good as the other ones. And that's why we want them to hit water. We want to make sure they're pushing forward and not just take it out of a box, put it in another box type of deal. But these big ones back here are beautiful. Yeah. And the ones in the back, they're going to be kind of... So I don't want to say more beautiful, but put them in the people front. that picked plants today would have picked from the front roughly, Yes, you know, and they're going to yeah. go, oh, this one and this one. And then every time, like Wednesday mornings, right, before we get the plants, someone's going to come through and pull anything they don't like. So here, this tank's already ready for tomorrow. Like, okay, yeah, all the microsoft's looking good. Pull it to the front. Let's make it easy for people to pick the right ones. We haven't got to that tank. Usually it's yeah. a morning thing the day before plants come in. So do these require CO2? I'm just asking. I would say probably yes. Like yeah. you, it, you can technically grow without it, but it really wants it. Okay. To get the nice reds and purples, a lot of iron, CO2, highlight. So this is another one of my favorites from back when I used to actually. The dwarf have sash. Plants in my tank. Mm -hmm. It will literally take off your whole, take over your whole. Some tank reason almost. we must be priced right, or people are falling in love with it, but we're up like three hundred percent on selling this item. Like we really? are having yeah. to expand tanks. I know we have a couple hundred coming in tomorrow. It used to be a plant we only sold like thirty or forty of a week, and now we're selling hundreds. Wow. hundreds so it's good yeah but yes more plants everyone comes over to here they're gonna plant or they're gonna pack your plants we've got all of our we we're gonna build see we're not one of the reasons we haven't done this tour yet is i'm not done building well like, you're, you're you know. never gonna be done building yeah but we need so, a big station here to, to hold to everything yeah so what are the styro cups for those so you take a styro cup those are what they ship the bonsai the little anubius in the terracotta pot so okay. we save them and we reuse them and we ship them oh, out so the same way that's, yeah that's they ship them to us ship. that way we save them so nice. we can ship it out the same nice. way 
Yep. Okay, so guys, our hands are wet. We're done with plants. Yes. So this is how it starts, by the way, is we pick all of the wet goods first. Okay. And then they get put on a shelf here. So let's say we picked out all the plants. They would already be with your order. They'd be in this blue tote, which apparently these blue totes cost like $4 billion, by the way. Way more than anyone thinks. Wow, yeah. Because they're industrial and they're strength. All up here? Then they get put there, and you'll have other people pulling these and then finishing out the dry goods because we don't want to spill water onto uh, the, dry the dry stuff. Goods. We want right. to get everything packaged up, get it dry, and then go put dry stuff in it. Got it. So then you could walk right through here, through more yeah. dehumidifiers and everything. And then this is where the magic happens of you guys order something, it gets, uh, you know, it gets, it gets picked. picked by a so picker. Are they, are they carrying one of these things around when they're picking? Yep, they're gonna carry one of those. Exactly, you've got that exactly right. Got it. And you just put in so everything they're ordering. Like a Murphy pin. Yep. Yeah. You know? And, and from what I understand, and you guys will see this, that some of this stuff doesn't seem like in a logical order to me. It is not. You. It's, but it is. It is, but it isn't. So, if I remember right, you told me that it's all wrapped by popularity. Yes. And why is that? It's all proximity to. So the goal would be, someone places an order online, and if they order our five best-selling items, that someone could grab a tote. Yeah. Come over here and be like, oh, I need these three. And then, oh, yep, I need an easy green and a sponge. And so you'd stuff. grab this, and then you'd grab your easy green. And then right, you turn right back around and send it down to all the packers. And there it goes down to like 60 foot. And really, there'd be a line of stuff. So you just push the yeah, next one, nice. and maybe you're sending a light, right? You're like, oh, you bought a light. This is a four footer yeah, here. Send it. Yeah, send it down. So guys, and the thing is, I really wanted to surf this earlier. <laughs> I really, really did. He really did. did. I really did. I was up there. But look, it's, it's still going. Yeah, because we've got the correct level to it. And it's so not that, going too fast. Right. It will float all the way down to the first, to the packing, first station. packing station. And that's what we have here is all the packing stations. So we're building the fourth station right now. This won't come out probably before then, but this is to handle the Black Friday rush we're gonna have. Okay. So, so we will have... that first packing station. Yeah, and so that's like, cause once you're here, we stock pretty much up to here. You can keep moving stuff along if you need to, like, oh, let's, you know, person, station A needs more stuff. And you can just send it along. See, I'm now convinced that I could have gone down this because nothing falls off the edges. No, they're they're designed so that nothing can fall off the edge. I like yeah. that. Yeah, that is good. And then all the packages you guys order, we've got all our equipment, all our packing materials. You, know, you can see like we've that. got heat packs, we've got liners, we've got uh, the bubble mailers, we've got all kind. We've got our aquarium co-op. Uh, if you order like big sponge pads and that right. kind of stuff, right. that's what this will be we've right got, there. We've got the uh, the heat packs. The yep. The liners. And, and then do, the pop, do they go in here? It all goes in here. And then what's gonna happen is as this gets full, there's another person's job that will then take this over and then they would grab this okay. and they'll bring it over here. And this is where we have to sort the mail. So because right. we've gotten large enough to ship enough packages, yeah. USPS sends semi trucks to pick up from us because we'll fill all of this, right? This is one day. Yeah, this is yeah, one day. We'll one fill day. all of these. These are right. what the post office uses, but we have to separate into first class, stuff that stays in Washington, and then priority. stuff that goes outside of Washington. Everything's pretty much priority except for the first class, okay. which also ships the same thing. Yeah. It's a weight thing. Yeah. Uh, but like today, if we look at the, the board up top there, we shipped 300 orders and there's 79 orders remaining. It's also 9.15 at night. Right. So, but right. by tomorrow, a lot more orders will come in and that's an average day. Average for us is 300. So that's like 24 orders per hour. So that, that, is, that is the rate at which we were packing them now. At the time, we packed them much faster. It averages it over the whole day. Oh, though. because we're here late at night. Right, yeah, so like on a Black Friday, well, we'll pack you know, in shifts and pack for 16 hours straight. It'll give us an accurate count of how fast are we packing. Got it. Um, and we track all kinds of stats and stuff like that. We're looking at, um, let me make sure I'm not showing off anything there. But like we have a board over here that says days since the last misship. So we shipped 300 packages, but we misshipped one thing 
yesterday. So it shows that someone ordered freeze-dried Daphnia and Extreme Nano. We picked Extreme Nano and Hikari First Bites. We sent First Bites and Daphnia. So one product was off. And so with 300 orders, we might have shipped 2,000 items. So do but you, we got do one you contact off. that person in advance and let them know? Well, the only way we really find out is when they, when they notify us. You. And so this is a new program we put into place. When someone gets a misship, we ship the thing to you and we give you, uh, I think we give you a $20 gift card also. Nice. It might only be if it's delayed. We have another table for if you order something and somehow our inventory is off. Okay. So I think it might include both. I can't remember where we fell on that, so don't hold me accountable for that. But the table of woe. <laughs> this is where you order something and somehow it's not in this warehouse. We cannot find it. Inventory was off, something happened, or it broke, it fell off a shelf. It sits here so that every employee, myself, Randy, everyone will see it and go, wait, why haven't we shipped this customer's order? Right. And when we, if we determine that there's a delay on it, we ship everything else out. And no matter what, if, if something hits this table, you get a $20 gift card from us as an apology of like, nice. we're so sorry. And when we do get the item, we will ship it out to you. So I saw a whole bin of those gift cards. Can I take them? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think there's any actual gift cards over there. There yeah, might be. There was some $10 ones. There, there could be. So yeah. this, this is why the, the lights are right here because they go so fast to get to there. Yep, exactly. Okay. And, it, and we didn't have a good spot because it had to be four feet to accommodate the big lights, to put it back here in the other system. Okay. You know, but there's lots of, a lot of heavy stuff came out here as well because we have to move it with pallet jack, like rocks and that kind of stuff and pallets of Easy Green. So, can, can we talk about an Easy Green sale now? A sale? A sale. I think we should put this on with some special code. Okay, what's the code gonna be? I don't know, how, do you, how many letters do you have for your I think codes? you could use about anything you wanted, but if you make it way too long, people can't remember it. Oh man, how about... Um, Make it something easy, like your name. Dean was at the warehouse or something like that. That's how about how about Dean and then like a percent off or something? Okay. Um, okay, so we can't do 50% off, can we? <laughs> no. <laughs> I literally would lose money. So, like so, with the shipping, we would... We would <laughs> what do you think we could do off of this? Like... As a one-time thing? One-time thing, like from now until, what, a week? A week from when this video comes out? Yeah. Uh, 10%? Yeah, we could do, we, we've done 10. Like that, that's pretty, that's not that big. Like it's not 50% either. About, how about if it's 10% off if they buy any other product? I don't know if the system can now, make us do, do that. that. I think we could maybe do that. You think, I think we can. Yeah, I've never made people you can have to buy something else. But how about how about fifteen percent off? That's more than ten. It's not fifty. Okay. It's more than ten. It rhymes. Yeah. So maybe Dean fifteen. There you go. Okay. That's the new Dean thing. 15. Dean, 15. Dean fifteen. Okay. And uh, for a week after the video comes out only. Seven days. Yes. Okay. And, and this is and when the orig original video airs, because if you watch this in three years, it's not the same. Right, and it cannot be combined with Black Friday coming up or anything like that. Yeah, it's, it doesn't combine with anything else. Right. Like, this is not thought out. Because Hopefully I'm it's not a train wreck. Because I'm going to try this in my fish room myself. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So Well, well you've had the other Easy Green, but the, have, you haven't had the small bottle before. I haven't had the small bottle. So. Yeah. But yes, lots of dry goods, you know. Tons, not lots, tons. Well, so now we're actually forced to make decisions when we want to bring a product. Sometimes we yeah, have to like, go, does a product have to leave or how much space does that take? Like for instance, bringing a shirt on, it's not just one bin. You bring a shirt on, we sell it in seven different sizes. That's seven bins worth. These, by the way, guys, are really awesome. Yeah, the, that's um, the acrylic one. I, I don't have the acrylic tank, but I took the metal tank one home yep. or the glass tank one. They work incredible. So I think we have like six different bins full of those because yeah. there's different sizes, different types, different. And that's what we're running into is like, oh, and oh what's here? I didn't believe they were awesome, but they are. Oh, I think this is the thing that I ordered in. That I don't even think you have one of these. <gasps> oh, <Yeah>. oh my God. <laughs> yeah, he's literally dying. <coughs> Look at this. You know what's hilarious? It's a running joke between me with Randy and I. They're left hand only mugs. Cause like, are you, do you want to show other people or do you want to show you? you me, it's only on one side. Me. Okay, then that's a right hand only mug. I don't drink coffee. Yeah. But I'm sure I could put this to good use. 
but there's gonna be more of these coming right yeah we've got so there's a there's a couple more boxes underneath nice so you can see this is kind of a whole palette of oh yeah it is of mugs wow. so that's how this works is so like even though you've got this flake food right here yeah you're gonna have stacks yeah. of it and then when it overflows from here it actually goes even further yeah, back in the warehouse back. yeah, yeah. so that's so i saw something earlier um that i found really interesting over here there's so much stuff here guys Mm-hmm. oh i should say that's why we clearance something out like the north fin food because we want to bring other brands on if it's not selling it's not that it's bad if it's not selling, I need to make space to bring on more brands that I might want to try. Yeah. So that's like in our clearance section on the website right now. We might, it looks is. like I we only have two day. things of it left of that one. Two things. We've been running out because people are actually buying it up, but. Made in Canada, I believe. Yep. Yeah, lots of and shrimp king food. I foods. love that you carry this. This is this is one of my. That's the shipping secret weapon. Favorite little shipping secret weapon. Exactly. It's expensive, but. But it works. I don't make any money on it, but I carry it in case I ever want to bring fish okay. somewhere. I also use that when I take fish to a fish auction. Yep. Or if I'm bringing something home and the and the bag is, I take a little, couple little pieces with me. Mm -hmm. Just drop them in. Yeah. It was this this is all saw. rock over here. This right here, it says dragon on top. Yeah. It looks to be all packed and ready to go. That's true. So how do I know what it looks like? How do you know? You go on the website. But that one, these are all random 10 pounds. Random 10 pounds. Yep. So you're going to get 10 pounds of Dragonstone. You could have big ones, small ones, a mix. There's a mix. a mix, but there's a range. Like, okay. So there's always at least three stones. There's yeah. a range in size. It won't be just one big one or 40 small ones. But we have that also. If you're looking for only smalls, somewhere, well, that's going to be Saru Stone. Same thing. So that's the Saru Stone 10 pack. This is the Saru Stone small pieces. Small if you pieces, wanted to do right. a nano tank or accentuate... Right that bigger one we have this also in dragonstone i just i don't know where it is look off the top of my head look at, guys look at this yeah sponge filters like, you haven't seen anything yet there's like more than a pallet of sponge filters here yeah so you can see here this kind of shows the the warehouse scale yeah. this is from the post office that is a palletized stack of just boxes. the padded envelopes. Oh, the padded envelopes. And that is two out of three pallets at a time. We get them three pallets at a time. So we have to That's stack crazy. them up and, you know, put like, where are we gonna put all this? You can see here, here's another pallet. This is just boxes from USPS. Yeah, yeah from stuff going out. Um, so yeah, we should have, I don't know where it's living. That's, it's gotta be right around here though. I know it's gotta be on somewhere. This is all the next, so then we were able to get them so they're already packed for us in 10 pound boxes. Oh, nice. So we don't have to do it anymore. And it's got the barcode, easy scanning, so we can have less picking errors. So that's after these are gone. Right, because every time you touch something in a warehouse, there's a potential for mistakes, right? right. So right here, someone could ship this out as Seru Stone, even it says Dragon. That's why I write Big Dragon, dragon on it, on it. Yep. that kind of stuff. And over here, we've uh, changed a little bit. We've got a barcode. Go but ahead. every once in a while, someone, you know, is groggy from eating lunch and they start putting Seru Stone barcodes on Dragonstone. And that's a whole big thing until we figure it out. And so that's why wow. we want it done from basically the source. That's, the rock comes from China. Have someone do a whole pallet of it at a time and so we don't have mistakes. So come over here and look this way. Yeah, the, okay. the okay. depth. So, I want you to think about this. Monster Fish Keeper to this in eight years? Ten yeah, years? yeah, I mean, we've known each other for eight and you've watched it all yeah. happen pretty much, so yeah. So, this is what's happened from just pure pure determination and work. And we haven't even seen it all. We're going into the... Uh, this is like the back stock the, area where we really area. have way too much stuff to go out on the floor. A little yeah. bit quieter back here, which is nice. But you can see like these pallets this is are just heat packs. heat packs because we know we're gonna sell a lot of plants during the winter. And so you can see here pallets of easy, easy green. green. Easy green, easy green, easy carbon. Yeah, easy iron there, yep. Easy iron. And Look so. Oh, I thought there were sponge filters in there. There is back behind Guys, there. There's, no, I thought there oh, were sponge filters yeah. in there. 
Yeah. There's sponge filters out here. That's and what that wall is too. This wall right here is also sponge filters. And you can see that, okay, obviously you look in this area, there's still some work being done. Yep, we're still it's still running yet. extra like uh, ethernet cables and stuff because we have a station back here. All this job does when you're at this station is you're scanning stuff coming in. So we know that we don't want to make a mistake when something gets shipped out. And we know that it costs us a $20 gift card every time we're out. Right. So if someone gives us one too many of one package and one out of another, that's two problems we're going to have in inventory. That costs us $40 in gift cards right, right off the bat. So we pay someone to scan everything in to minimize that. Got it. Yeah. And then uh, obviously those are extra plant tanks. Those are extra plant tanks for a little more expansion or if anything was to fail. Yep. Bulk food, uh, shrimp caves. These yep. are all backlog of billions of products that are out there. Yeah, it's all, it's all gonna go out there. And right now we've got some space and it's not a lot, but there's a container on the water because we're running out of some other items. So that's why we've, we kind of have to restack. We're constantly having to move things, which, you know, costs money and everything, but it's, you know, we, we're, we haven't outgrown this, but it's getting tight in here already. And we've only, we've been here like six months. And, and I remember when we, I walked up to Aquarium Co-op and you guys, you and Randy were walking outside one time. Mm -hmm. Looking at a two car garage to expand. We actually did rent that. You did rent, I understand that. <laughs> so it's, I mean, it was just this little area and I'm like, are you sure that's gonna be big enough? Oh, it was not big enough. It we was, just needed anything. Right, so, um, you know, this is what can be done with a lot of determination. Um, yep. And I will say, you also have a lot of great employees that are for sure pushing along the way. And on top of that, a lot of really great customers. People are loyal and yeah. that's, if people stop buying, we can't do anything. So right. people continually support us and we continually try to put out content. We try to do the best with the money. That the money comes in, we go, how do we make the hobby a little bit better? Right. We still have to make money, still got to pay employees. We but still- Always innovating. Yeah, always and you'll see some of that stuff in, after this, Dean's gonna show you what he actually picked out while he was at the warehouse, and you'll see some new stuff that we've never been shown before. Right. Maybe some of you received it in a, you know, a shipment or something like that, but most people won't have seen some of that stuff. So, yeah, work in progress every day is a very long day for myself, Randy, Joel, a lot of the employees, like, there's just a lot, if you've ever worked at a warehouse and you know, we, we don't have the money to just like, oh, just build a new warehouse. It's like, well, earn money and build a warehouse a little bit at a time, step by step. So how, how much time, how often do you come every day to the warehouse? I don't come every day. I, I check in every day with video calls and that kind of stuff. Okay. Most of what I do now is I'm in talks with like the people we're ordering from and I don't want to call it like brand deals because we don't do brand deals, but... I want to ask, well, a lot of it is quality control. Like, how do we make this product better? How do we do this? Or how do we do that? Or, you know, this is a complaint we're getting. Can we make this better? What can we do here? And it's not always cheaper, but better. Right. We focus on how do we make it better? Not cheaper, right. but better. Right. That's the big thing is, so a lot of times our cost goes up. We make less money, but then it's less problem for the customer. Right. And we usually ask people, meet us halfway. And there's test products in here probably somewhere where, you know, we're using it, we're getting them to modify it, we're gonna use it again. And then when, like we might be eight months into it, now we ordered in, we got pallets, we're shipping it. Right. You know, if it's right. not right, if it won't ship right, if it's not gonna ship economically, you know, there's a lot of stuff we continually go through round and round and go, how do we make this slightly better? How do we do this slightly better? And we learn from selling, you know, that here's yeah, Sarah Stone example. in bulk and we have to package it up. Now right. you can see the next run, like we're getting really low on this, but the next run over there is already, already packed, right. you know? And so that's just a logical step of like, wait, we took some manpower out of it. We can not have to raise the price when shipping goes up. Great. You can see on this side over here, we actually do have, this is that dragon stone that oh, should be over there somewhere, but the, the chunks. So we, we made this better. better. People were complaining that some chunks would come in too small. We had them sort it again in the next batch, so there's almost no fine small stones. stuff at all. You can break it up if you want. And so, nice. you know, we continually go, okay, we listen, we'll try and make it better, okay. And like on the, you know, on the feeders, for instance, you'll hear more about why they were taken off the website, but we're looking into, can we make them black? 
Right. And the answer is yes, but the minimum order fills that fills that space. Like all of that space back there would have to be feeders because they don't want to run the color black through because the problem with black that we're learning is running it through the molds, any remnants ruins every other color. I you know i remember that from when, when i used to do some plastic stuff so they want a very large run yeah. and they like to clean all the equipment and honestly someone at our size with a warehouse this big can't afford to have them make it in black right They're, they already run green for other stuff and so like well we don't have to clean the equipment to run green so we can do green most people think we chose that green that was one of the choices we had oh, but black is not a choice we have so, so there that's go. why we go with green but yeah. Okay guys, so this is what's behind Aquarium Co-op nowadays. This, yeah. Uh, so now I need to take the phone and do some B-roll. Um, <laughs> you need to walk to the front. Oh, you're gonna walk right to the front now. A little bit, little bit slower. Oh, okay. yeah. I'm making him do this, by the way. That's right. Well, I do come, I pretty much only come to the warehouse at night. Yeah. And I do, if no one else is here, I do this like, oh my gosh, I own this. This is such a scary thing. Like, you you look at everything and go, is that a tripping hazard? Is that dangerous? Do I have enough of this? Was that a good decision? My life savings is what? right there. You know, all Your life savings. Things. So, scary but fun. That's fire extinguisher, yeah. There you go. And, and we come all the way back into the front. Yep, where you'll show the products you picked out. Where the products are and the pinball I'll machine. Start with the pinball machine. There you go. Okay, so guys, um, tonight I just happen to be in the neighborhood of the Aquarium Co-op warehouse. And I did a little shopping. I wanted to show you what I shopped for and why. Well, I wanted you to show that just because. Yeah, but what, 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 what do I want and why do I want it? You know? Yeah, exactly. That was the thing. Cause people yeah. value your opinion. And so I wanted, like there's right. things that people have never seen here before too. So. Right, so I've never had one of these. Can you imagine my fish room without an aquarium co-op towel in it? He was at my, in my fish room and why don't I have one of these? Like, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. So I had to beg, but I got it. Um, easy green. now. I've been playing a lot in my fish room lately with um, trying to get some green into the tanks. Let's put it that way. That's the best way. Not, you know, green like fertilizer, but plants. Trying to get them to grow. Uh, whether I'm putting them in pots. I don't do a lot of gravel, as most of you already know. So um, I've been to uh, one of the stores you did a tour of down in California. Yep, um, Ocean Chichin. Aquarium. There's going to be a link in the corner there. Yep, a link up top. Okay. And um, he's done a lot with deep bed gravel and CO2, not injected, but in a inverted pot bottle, basically. Yep. So I'm playing a little bit with that in my fish room. Uh, and of course I need some fertilizer for the plants. And actually, you know, if you go online and, and Google it, the Easy Green comes up a lot. I mean, it's near the top every time I Googled. So I thought, okay. I'm gonna try that. So I got the Easy Green. A um, couple of these little USB air pumps. Now, I've played a little bit with these. Um, I'm going to take, uh, because right now I'm kind of, um, I have a second, let's just call it a second residence in California. And sometimes, you know, I wanna bring fish back or maybe wanna keep a fish there. Um, you can carry fish, by the way, on the plane. Just download the TSA document and take it with you when you go through. If you're carrying them in a bag with water and there's a fish in there, they will not stop you. The other thing I'm running is um, uh, I have a little outdoor pond now, about the same size as one of um, Corey's smaller ones inside. Um, and I'm running a USB air pump on it. So far it's been running for, I don't know what, four months almost now no problem and I just want to be sure um, that I'm gonna let it run throughout the winter when it's freezing you're a guy that keeps backups yes yeah exactly that's what that's for so these things extreme krill flakes now 
Corey didn't even know this when he hooked up with Extreme, but I've been using some of Extreme's foods for quite some time now. Um, I've never seen the krill flakes before. Because it was a marine food. It was a marine food. Now, a lot of people, um, in fact, I heard, I think, I think you mentioned it. You were comparing them to the Sarah flakes, mm -hmm. um, that they're crunchier. I actually like that. Okay. Um, I mean, I love, I love the the Sarah. I forget which they are. The Vipan Nature. That I think. one. Yep. I love those. These things are fantastic, and um, I like the crunch because then I can kind of control the size I crumble it up to better. Mm -hmm. um, everything in my fish room eats this the first time every time. So that goes anything from discus, dwarf cichlids, guppies, angelfish. Um, plecos, catfish, quarries, um, the lungfish, the tetras, the gerp, ger, geophagus, I'm sorry, not gerp. All of them took it the very first time. Um, so, and it brings out the color. I actually think it smells good too. I love the smell of it. No I mean, joke, I love to smell I mean, it. It kind of reminds me of, remember when we were walking around in the fish market in Peru? Mm -hmm. that, that seafood fish smell? Yep. Kind of reminds me of that. Minus, like it's like going to the grocery store except minus the heavy chlorine smell. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Min minus the disinfectants, right. Uh, now, these are the ones that, one of the ones that I really like are the, the Extreme Nano. Um, these are a tiny pellet. Um, anything from a three quarter inch guppy and on up, we'll chow down on these. Um, I've used these for about four years now. See, I, I honestly didn't know that. And I had to... Because Dean uh, puts all his stuff in un, unmarked jars at his I fish do. room. He doesn't want people figuring out what he's feeding. Well, you know, it's like, I don't know. I just feel weird about being brand specific. You know? Yeah. So, although we did talk earlier today about how I would like to get my fish room down to four or five foods, period. Mm -hmm. I think that would make life easier. I think that right there is a little tidbit of like getting down to four or five. I think most people might not feed four or five already. That's and true. you're trying most to get down to one that. Jar. And I'll bet you I have 40 different foods in my fish room right now. You know, companies that send me samples, other things that I buy online. Um, you know, I hear that someone's using this food and it's doing fantastic. Got to try it. And you know, some of it works, some of it doesn't. Um, I don't want to name any brands that don't because it could hurt the company, so. Sure. Uh, so, Corey talked me into a couple of these. I'm gonna try these out. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I have used some automatic feeders before. Uh, what intrigues me about this one is what I call the dump zone. Um, you know, uh, I will mention this brand, Eheim. Their dump zone is half of a 10 gallon tank. You know, it just goes and it's dump, 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 dump. This, it's like right there. Makes it easier, um, makes it more controllable. Um, for those of you that are really anal, you could probably end up having it dump into a feeding ring. Yeah. Um, I'm not that crazy. You know? And officially we have stopped selling this feeder because we have discovered there's an error in like seven or eight percent of them and we're working with the company and they're asking us to submit videos so they can fix the next test or not the next test but the next run of them and so currently they're not on the website and these if you've got a defective one we've either reshipped you one or given your money back once you get one that works fine it, it works, works fine forever yeah. but we have had ones that stop yeah. either right out of the box or a day or two later they're problematic and I personally run the company at 5%. Anything above 5%, we pull and we demand we fix it before we keep selling because we actually lose so much money from reshipping. So even though we make it right, right, right. it makes it a non-profitable product. And so there's gonna be a delay in maybe ever getting more. We have to actually fix and get the problem down. And I could have we could have kept selling them forever, but could we have, don't want to yeah. do it under that guy. So just but, know when you go to the website and it's not there, that's why. Yeah, and you know, that that's one of the good things. You know, they're, they're basically, they're standing behind the product. So, you know, if you do have one that's not working, get one reshipped. Yeah. Odds are, once it's working, it'll work forever. The ones in my fish room work great. The ones we have in testing in the office here, like we've te we're testing a ton, but you know. You can't test every single seven one. Seven or eight of them out of a hundred. Right. They have a defect and it's, the, the seconds hand on it gets stuck and yeah. then 
So I don't know what part of the manufacturing process, but we need them to fix that. And then we can go, great, now we're, we've right. got it back again. Right. Uh, um, so the yeah. other thing, the other thing I will say that I like about this that I've seen is you don't have to use a piece of tape to control the quantity of food. Right. I mean, and, and it'll pour just a little bit if you want, just a little bit. Mm-hmm. So other things I got, I, I've already tried a few of these. I want to try a few more are the sponge filters. Mm-hmm. I personally really like the green color in the tank. Um, I've, I've used the gray brand mm -hmm. for a long time. Um, if you could see a lot of the bottoms on my gray brand, they're rusted. And uh, that's a known, I, I, I don't know if you'd call that a defect. Or, uh, I think it's a known point of wear, maybe. Point of wear, yeah. Yep. Dropping. So, so I took a couple of both the two larger sizes. Uh, I'm going to re replace a few in my fish room. And um, Dean helped kind of craft this filter in that there were lots of prototypes he got his hands on and that I kind of did, stuff. But the yeah. final product, he hasn't had that many of no, the final I, product. I don't think I've had any of the final product. Uh, well, I, actually never had I don't know if you've actually got like them this. in the white box ever. Yeah, you've no. only got stuff before that. No, exactly. Same, same mold and everything, but never got the... And that's not even the final package, by the way. Once, now that we really like the design and everything, we will design it more like that green box. I was going to say, I bet this will be a green box. They were going to delay shipping with, them for like another month or two. <laughs> to get the custom boxes. So we yeah. said, ship in white boxes, we don't care. And then you guys might be curious about this. And, and this is- This is something we've, I've never talked about or shown yet. Yeah, so I was talking to Corey about, you know, going to the fish club auctions, taking stuff home, um, trying to keep it warm in the winter. And they've made these, um, I mean, it even says aquarium co-op right on it. Yep. Okay. They've made these insulated foil liners um, that has a zipper on the top of, it, it's just a- It's like a Ziploc bag. It's like a Ziploc bag zipper. Yep. And it stays closed. Um, so I saw them, I said, okay, you know, I need a couple of those to try out. And, and because winter's, winter's upon us. Yep. Um, and, uh, so I'm going to try these out, um, see how they work. I mean, I've cobbled together some styrofoam in the past. Mm -hmm. I just wanted, uh, you know. Well, for us. It's also reusable. So if yes. you get something from the co-op. That's why we made them to ship plants when it's plants. ultra cold. So when a heat pack's not enough yep. and it's ultra, ultra cold, you get a heat pack and one of these. Right. And then I hate shipping. We get a lot of styrofoam and yeah. I don't want to ship yeah. a lot of styrofoam like we have in the past. And so I said, well, once someone gets it, they can reuse this. Yeah. And so, yes, you can bring fish home from an auction, but maybe everyone doesn't have a local club. So the other use for it is you're buying frozen foods at your fish store, frozen put them food. in there, bring them home. They stay frozen longer. And we will also employ this technology uh, in the summer at the hottest months, maybe Arizona, Nevada. To keep things cooler. Yeah, because it reflects heat out and also reflects heat in. And, and, yeah. and, you know, guys, that could easily fit in your um, reusable grocery bags. Sure. I mean, you could use them in a grocery store and all that, but my main goal was how do we take something that's typically a waste item and make, and it, make reusable. it reusable? Because the extra zipper costs as much as the rest of the thing. But I was like, no, no, I want them reusable. That's right. important. Right. And so... You know, so when, what, I, anyway, what, yeah. when I was asking Corey about, um, you know, how I could keep things, he said, well, I'll try a couple of those. So trying a couple of those, and I got a couple of their heat packs. I love these heat packs. Okay, and what do you love about them? Because I could tell you things that I love about them. Here's the reason we went with this heat pack in particular is because it says what it is. We get emails every right on day. It says, what is this thing in my package you guys sent? And sometimes they'll ask if it's fertilizer, is it gravel, is it, and then we have to say, no, it's the heat pack that kept your plants alive. Right. And so, again, you know, it's got the animals right on it. Yep. That it's keeping warm. The other thing I actually like about it is the shape. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, it's it's not just a square thing, so it's longer, so it's going to distribute the heat mm -hmm. better. Yeah, and we get questions from sometimes when packages get opened and inspected, what is this thing? And now they'll know, right. oh, it's a heater. It's a heater. It's a warmer. And just in case you're ordering from Aquarium Co-op throughout the winter, it's 72 hours. They ship almost everything priority mail. Yeah. I mean, Basically, everything ships two to three day in the very furthest corners like Florida and stuff like that. Or like there's some parts in the Midwest where you're so rural it takes that fourth day. Right. But, you know, honestly, this is as good as money can get yeah. at this point. Can't get it any better than that. So, all right. Well, Great. if you like this video, go ahead and like, subscribe, do all that. We'll see you in the next one.